year what is going on everybody this is your host rob back with another episode of from my experience podcast this is going to be a part two of the episode i just posted um basically talking about transitioning from dating to a relationship um and i got a special guest with me cv from his podcast we here man hey what up what up family yo I appreciate Rob bringing me back on the show. I feel like it's been forever. It has been, man. And you know what, y'all? Uh, it's funny. I post. We follow each other, and like whenever we post new shows, we listen to it and listen to them immediately. Then we hit each other up, and he heard it, and he was like, "Man, you should have had somebody on there. You should have had me on there." And I was like, uh, "All right, let's do it." So, <laughs> man, exactly. I was listening to. It. it was like almost like you was doing like a theater monologue, and you were just like right there, <laughs> and you had that spotlight over your face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, that's exactly what it was like, man. But all right, so what what you done? What you done got, man? What what you, what you got from the show? What is it that you wanted to uh, touch in on? Man, you said a lot. Like really, <laughs> honestly, for really, I mean, you touched on a lot of different things. But you know, I figured because I mean, me and you talk off the pod, so I didn't know if you wanted to talk about that situation with no names, because some of that I could tell you were drawing from that, right? So I was like, okay. That's why I asked you. I was like, "Shorty, listen to the show." <laughs> <laughs> no, it, no, but <laughs> so yeah, so you know, it. This is you know stuff from my experience. It's and here's the thing. Like, I'm. I guess I. I wouldn't say I'm going through it now. Like, it is what it is. I'm cool. But I've been in situations like that before because I've been the person who's had to do the asking and deciding to wait around, and I've also been the person who's been asked. And I've okay. been the one that said, I'm not ready or that's not what I want. So I've been on both sides and I feel like it's not something that's talked about enough. Um, and we going <laughs> to, it's not funny, but it's funny. We're going <laughs> to talk about something we heard on the breakfast, breakfast club, which basically, I mean, it, oh, it, please. it, it, it can't Actually, just go ahead and get that out the way. Cause <laughs> it's kind of funny. It's like... <laughs> yo, yo. So if y'all didn't, first of all, if you didn't listen to episode, I'm going to call this episode 67 and a half. So if you didn't listen to episode 67, go back and listen to it. I talk about, you know, basically you you being up front with the person, letting them know what you want, you know, relationship-wise, because you don't want to leave it up to someone's interpretation. Yes, actions, in my opinion, speak louder than words, but people's ultimate, the ultimate defense mechanism is, well, you ain't say that. You ain't say nothing. <laughs> so Hey, man, that's the, that's the bullshit cop-out answer. <laughs> what? So, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was listening to the Breakfast Club. It is April eighteenth. That episode, I, get, I think that was April seventeenth. That episode actually aired. So basically, they have a session called "Shoot Your Shot," where people call in. They tell them about a romantic situation they're in or a crush they have, and they call the person to shoot their shot. So there's this chick. My bad, but if they hadn't heard "Shoot Your Shot" by now with the Breakfast Club, they under a block. <laughs> but you know what? Here's the thing. I didn't even know the Breakfast Club had you know posted their shows like that i thought you had to listen live but once i found it on itunes i was like hey oh yeah um oh, yeah. so this chick called she had been seeing her brother's best friend she said they've been friends for years he's one of her best friends and she'd been that you know they've been sleeping together behind her brother's back and spending a lot of time with each other and she was saying you know i want to i think we should go ahead and tell my brother and so, so they were like, well, wait, why would you want to do that? And she was like, well, we want to be together. We don't want it to be a secret anymore. And, you know, he feels we. the same way. Right. She's saying we. And Char Charlemagne was like, you want to go ahead and piss your brother off and, and tell your brother about this so he can tell you about all the other girls that you, that uh, the man you think wants to be with you is sleeping with? Go ahead, sis. This is not going to turn out well for you. She said, yeah. no, that's not happening. We want to be together. We spend so much time together. We talk on the phone, blah, blah, blah. So from the way she was describing it, I was like, dang, she's she, she going to prove Charlemagne wrong. So they called a guy and she says, you know, I think we should tell my brother about us so we can be together. This, when I say pump the brakes, y'all, I'm talking about with two with <laughs> with two feet, this dude hit the brakes on her and was like, whoa, whoa, what is you talking about? She's like, you know, we've been hanging yeah. out. We've been doing our thing. Straight New York accent on yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he was like, yo, you crazy. He was like, nah, nah, I ain't trying to do that. Basically, he was like, when we started out, we said no feelings, none of that. We just having fun. Like, you my friend and I care about you, but I ain't trying to do all that. Yeah. So she's hey, man, look, he probably care more about his face because his brother was gonna, her brother's going to smash it. Like, yeah. He's gonna, look. Yo, and so it got a little ugly to the point to where 
she was like, you know, dang. So the stuff you did with me, you know, you eat my butt. You do that with you do that with just anybody. <laughs> and he was like, nah, nah. And this and this man was like, oh man, you ate the booty. She he was like, well, she did me first. I was like, come on, dog. Yo, then like, so go ahead. pretty much nobody should eat or drink after them at family event. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Be like, yo, hey, <laughs> she eat ass. Don't. No. Yeah, that's <laughs> terrible. So it gets even better because then he was like, I can't be with you anyway because I got a girl, and she was in shock. And I was, <laughs> and now she brought out the the ace of spades. Listen, Matter of fact, she, got, she brought out her the big, big joker. joker. That the big joker. big joker. Listen. That was his baby joker. I got a girl. And then the worst part is he was like, yeah, I met her after we started messing around. So you was the ultimate. You was already a side, well, hell, a side piece or just a thing he was smashing. So while he's smashing you, he met someone else and thought enough of them to be with them and keep on smashing you. That's terrible. Exactly. So by this time, the breakfast club done jumped in, made a couple jokes. And she said, well, I'm telling everybody anyway because I'm pregnant. <laughs> Look, man, I'm going to tell you like this. Like, and he denied the baby immediately. Hey, he was like, it ain't mine. <laughs> but, but but real talk, come on now. If if I'm thinking if you like that freaky with me, we not official, then I'm probably going to be like, you probably busting it down for other cats too. That's yeah. just how the game goes. Yeah. Right? Because they ain't really had nothing on paper. So like that's that's kind of like a perfect situation to kind of analyze a little bit. I mean, we because it's probably a little different, right? Mm. If it was a secret, were they going like were they like going on dates? Because she couldn't like have her brother have somebody find out. She said they went out. Oh okay, must be on some out of town shit. I wish they had like opportunity to give more details. Because yeah. like I know they couldn't get spotted by like mutual friends or, right. or another cousin and be like, I saw so and so with you know your right. sister another day. Because if they saw that, then it wouldn't have been no secrets. It would have been like, bro, brother would have been like, yo, bro, what's going on? What's up with you and my sister? Right. So. And then, so it it goes back low to. Low-key joint. No, nah, go ahead. Sorry. What'd you say? No, nah, I was just saying they probably went out on some real low-key, low-key joint. Right. You know he, he's mean? treating her like a true side chick because she was and didn't know it. So that so brought that me back. That, that brings me back to the point I made on my last episode. That's why you got to voice your opinion. Like, this chick was convinced that because of what they were doing and how he was treating her, he wanted the same thing that she wanted. But then the truth came out because he was like, nah, we said there was going to be no feelings involved. We just have <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> having exactly. fun. Now, she did And see, here's the thing, Shorty. If, if you knew that's not what you wanted or if y'all did start out like that and then your feelings changed, you should have let him know. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you, you thinking, oh, we having sex is good, blah blah blah. He's spending time with me. He like me. You don't know. You don't know that. Like you gotta. Unfortunately, you gotta ask the questions. Like we all do things that are pleasurable to us, but that doesn't mean it's something we want to stick with forever. So here's so here's my thing. So when I look at that situation, right? So we got two people, and so each person looks at it like they're based off of your your original. Uh, post on this. I was thinking about it like, okay, you got two people who are kind of looking at it like we had two different phases. Like she's at one phase and he's thinking they're at one phase in the dating stage. So like I would say she was probably at like that. Man, we probably dating exclusively. Like he's eating yeah. my butt, I'm eating his butt. <laughs> we together. Like, we together. Yo, like, but Shorty, let me tell you right now, if I'm eating your butt and you eat my butt, we're definitely in a relationship. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely man absolutely oh uh, he goes that's, home that's and kisses marriage. his girlfriend with that mouth bro yo man his <laughs> girlfriend i hope she never hears that because you know when you like when you close with your girl she know your voice oh no she's gonna find out because she's she's pregnant she's gonna yeah, tell true. she's gonna tell everybody it's gonna mm -hmm. be so bad for him mm -hmm. but like so for him he was just like yeah we cool like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kicking it with you but there's no exclusivity so like it was just two different phases so like when I was listening to your uh, your post earlier, I was like, man, I was like, you know, it's crazy. I'm I've been out the game for a minute, man. Like mm -hmm. I'm coming up on uh, November of 2011 is when me and her started kicking mm -hmm. it, and I really wasn't seeing anybody else at the time. So like I was kind of like, I was just chilling. Yeah. So when I when I dove in with with uh, Nella B, it was like, okay, cool, I'm good. And then I had to cut off everything because I was like, oh shoot, I like her. But I wasn't like kicking it with nobody like to where it was anything major. It was like a text. 
like, I, could I really could have did like a, a mass text message like hey i'm not gonna be talking to you no more yeah <laughs> <laughs> like, it, wasn't even, it was you know it was that light right yeah so I mean, it wasn't that I made it. So, like, when you was talking about it, I was like, dang, I have to, like, relive this in my head. Like, how did this work? It's so, different for everybody. It, it is different. It is different. But then it's funny. You know, so do you think, like, it could be made more simple? The whole phases? I say no, because if you remember the last episode we did about that chick, um, shout out to Claire Kia. I follow her on um, Instagram. She does a lot of photography and she's fine and she'd be doing yeah. stretches and stuff and yoga Ooh. but she <laughs> had an open relationship concept she she believed in dating straight to engagement so okay. everyone yeah, has this whole yeah so everyone has this whole concept of i or idea especially nowadays of how they want to date and it's just like you and the person got to figure it out i mean i'm with you i do you can make it simple but it just depends on the other person too, man. Like if y'all don't see eye to eye on how that process goes or how y'all want it to go, I just I just don't see it. So many people want to be free and do what they want and have what they want and then try to lock you down at the same time. It's crazy, man. Yeah. It's out of control. No, def people love options, man. It's almost like yeah, it's it's like that. I was actually listening to um a podcast. It's um it's this I think she's Swedish, like a Swedish therapist or whatever, and she was just talking about she was like. The number one issue she's finding right now is that, like, the internet has changed everything yes. like, in terms of dating. So, like, you can have your person physically there, but then you're actually, like, mentally seeking other options. And it's almost as if, like, people are, like, now placeholders. So, like, she's saying, like, relationships have evolved for the worse because of, like, social media, right? So... I'm thinking from a, a point of, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking from a different point, but it's crazy. Like, it's just, it's changed so much. And we, even though we like, we're not like quite millennials, we 80s babies. We are millennials, unfortunately. But yeah, but yeah, some articles say that. Some articles yeah. place us in other places. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So like, it's crazy. So like, we pretty much grew up with like computers. <laughs> yep. And so, I mean, like, we like them options, I guess. I mean, at the yeah. end of the day, man, that's why we having all these damn problems. And we can swipe and find a bitch. And you just hit the nail. <laughs> you just hit the nail on the head. Like I was saying in that last episode, back in the day before cell, like, you know, when, when me and CV were in our teens, you know what I'm saying? Cell phones wasn't popping like that. You saw a chick, if you out of state or you at the mall, you saw a chick. There was no Facebook and people uh, wasn't on MySpace well, and all that stuff like that. Like the area code, my you, you had to get it right then and there. You might never see her again versus nowadays. You can find out two or three pieces of information or go on Facebook for about 20 or 30 minutes. You probably can find snap. that chick. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to admit it, but I've done that. I've seen a chick. I'm like, oh, she works here. I just had enough information in my mind from just observing to find her. And I did. I didn't holler mm. at her. I felt like a creep after I did it. But <laughs> <laughs> but that's it's easy access. Like before, when you found a fine, a, found a fine woman, you had to work so hard to communicate. And you thinking about the work you had to put in to even get the number and all that stuff. You think about it a little bit more. Whereas nowadays... You can go on Instagram, you can go on Facebook, you can go on Snap and find, like CV said, find somebody in five minutes and you have direct, I don't need your phone number anymore. I can shoot you, I can slide into the uh, exactly. the inbox or the DMs. Inbox, I don't even need your yeah, number anymore. That. So exactly. guilty as charged too. <laughs> you get drowned in the DM. Like before, like yeah. if you went to the mall and it's you and your boys and at the most you got some, maybe your boys and some other dudes is probably competing for the same attention of a girl, right? Mm -hmm. But now, like, if she's popping on Instagram, you probably got, like, 100,000 dudes yeah. that are currently sending her a DM and saying good morning after she posts her picture. This damn sure thirst trap talking about, oh, this Starbucks was so good, but all you see is titties in the picture. <laughs> like, like that's basically, like, you know, like, I don't know, man. It's, it's crazy. But I think yeah. still, like, this, the one thing is when it comes down to dating, right, I still think that there's some universal truths. Like we can, yeah. it's almost like you gotta look at it like the Matrix and break that bitch down. Okay, so how could you normalize it? Like really, like normalize it? Because I mean, there's this whole dating and then exclusive dating, then relationship is. I mean, that's to me, that's. I think that's normal. That's cool. Well, I, 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 well, I kind of told you about it before. I told you about this one situation where I was talking to this young lady. Um, 
and she actually she broke it down for me. She was like, "Yo, I'm gonna call you Mr. Gray." And I mean, <laughs> she, you know, what I'm saying so she has this whole she has this whole team yeah. no great thing, and uh, basically, <laughs> like she told me, you know, that like I was like in the middle, like I wasn't black or white. I wasn't giving her the yes or the no. I just kind of dangled like this idea that maybe we might be, and um, you know, you're that, selling hope. Yeah, I guess I was selling hope, right? So at the end of the day, like, I think, you know, we could all break it down and make it so simple. Like, if there's no clear, you know, if the person, like, let's say you start out, like, that situation this morning, and they start out, and they're just kicking it. Mm-hmm. And if both of like, let's say one, because one of them, somebody's going to catch some feelings. Yes. Somebody's going to get it confused. It's impossible. Yes. Yeah, so sometimes it's the dude, sometimes it's the chick, right? Yes. I fell in, I fell in love with a hoe before I know what it's like. So you fall in love with this, with this, yeah, you know, you fall in love with this charlatan, and then all of a sudden you look her in the eyes, and you know you think you got something special, and then you know she's doing the same thing with everybody. So yeah, I, I think I think really honestly, it's like not hearing what you like to hear or or seeing what you want to see out of the person, but just seeing exactly and listening to exactly what they're saying. It can all be so simple. Like if if you shoot Shadi a good morning text and, you know, she give you, like, a short answer, but she have a deep-ass post to, po- you know, put on her ground. Right. Like, <laughs> you know say Like, a thoughtful quote, and you know she don't read books like that. Like, and she couldn't even give you, like, a good, like, hey, I thought about you this morning. Mm-hmm. Then you probably know she she really, you know, she out there looking for other options. You just, like, you might be getting her them free meals and a good time. Like, I think it's just, like, it just has yeah. to be, like, effort. And I wasn't giving that to, to Lil Ma, so she was just, like, it took her a little while to see that. It was kind of like I hit her up with convenient, you know what I mean? I wasn't I wasn't taking her on dates, really. If we were, like, if I was in the same area, I'd be like, you hungry? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, like, effort. So, yeah, I think, I think we just got to make it simple in our own minds. Sometimes we make it more complicated, more difficult. You just said something extremely um, important, too. You you communicate when even when you're not trying to communicate. So that's one thing I don't like. Like I don't like if I reach out to you, I call you, or I text you. And this and it takes a higher it takes a higher level of thinking and understanding to be able to deal with this. But I hate when I text or call somebody. You know what I mean? Um, and you don't respond to me, but you post on Instagram or you post on Facebook, but I can't get a text back. Because that means, number one, I know you looked at your phone. Number two, I know you saw the notification. <laughs> you might not have seen my text message, but you've seen that you have a message. I don't yeah. know too many people who look at their phones and don't check their messages. You know what I'm saying? I don't. So that means you ignored That's it. The first thing I said. Right. That means you ignored it or whatever. However, I do understand when you get to know someone and understand them like me, I'm always going to do, I do motivational Instagram videos on my personal page and I always post a couple of pictures. So I don't always respond right away, but I do respond later on and do those things. And a lot of times I do that is because I'm a very engaging person. Once I start a conversation with you, like me and CV do this. Once I start a conversation before you know it, an hour or so has gone by. So sometimes I don't get into it because I'm going to get into it and it's going to take me out in the left field. But me, I don't typically ignore people. Like I don't, I don't do that. So for me, if you see that, it doesn't mean that. But from a lot of other people, it means, you know, I'm just ain't trying to get, you know, shine right now. And y'all need to be aware of that. You got to automatically assume once I'm starting to talk to somebody that they're following me on everything. And that's why I keep my stuff mm-hmm. private and I track it. And then <laughs> you said track it. I do. So I was like, yeah, you, oh, wrote, they... you wrote it down in your ledger. Like, OK, nah, because they that request got to come in and I got to <laughs> approve it. So I'm like, all right, I need to be mindful of what I'm posting and what I'm saying. And because people take it the wrong way, like you said. But yeah, I would tell you, man, like, so one of the things you said that stuck out to me was like, I, like, it was kind of like that. You said it was a tricky part, like when you kind of express um express things and you're trying to figure out whether you like kind of stick around and wait and see if anything's going to progress or whatever the second right? time yeah the second time you ask about you know moving forward with someone yep so that's that's a level of a pa- that, that's a level of patience that um that i might have had in my 20s like early right. 20s and i tell you honestly like so i so the, one of the relationships that i referenced to talk to you about is one where i you know i say like hey like I got dragged through the mud with my ex, right? Mm-hmm. But I did a lot of crap too. So right. I think like one thing is like when you really focus on a relationship, 
like you do kind of dial in and you're like trying to figure out like how do I progress this thing forward. But like when we were going through all those ups and downs and makeups to breakups, like I was, you know, I had mad chicks in between and in wild during and whatever, right? So mm-hmm. it was like it wasn't like a real focus on it. Like we we definitely had some feelings, but it wasn't a true focus on a relationship. So um I don't think like I guess us not really moving forward, I wasn't trying to figure it out. Right. But like well you you're trying to like focus on dating someone. Yeah. Right. So I think like that focus needs to like not be just dialed in on why aren't they wanting to move forward right now? I think like I my focus would be like, what am I about to do next? But, and <laughs> and, like, see, and I, that would be my I, I mean you're you know what I'm saying yeah. like you're literally being very patient with, with with someone when you say, Why don't they like cause even after the first time, because you don't want to like necessarily waste your time on it and like it's like that's energy. Okay, that's true. But it's like okay, the first time no The first time you got to be prepared for anything and everyone has, there's things you got to take into account. The biggest thing is their history. So if they've been hurt before or been through certain things before, they're going to be a bit more precautious. And some people really want to do it differently the second time. A lot of, a lot of chicks that I've met have been hurt. They don't want to have sex. They want to wait till they're married. All this. That's the first thing I do is, is hold the pussy hostage. First date sex people. First date sex. I'm telling you. Just get it, get it out the way. Wait, wait. Get let me let way. me finish before. <laughs> so <laughs> we do that. Um, <laughs> he, he fucked my thought up. So the first okay. time I'm a bit more lenient because I'm also letting you know, like that is like the hammer is like, yo, I'm for real, I'm serious, and I know the way that I date women and the way I treat them. So they're taken aback by it, and they're gonna out. It's gonna be impactful. So if you need time to think about it, I get that. I have a certain level of patience and understanding. But now I've already given it to you for you to think about. So once I let the time pass and you've thought about it, now I need to explore a little bit deeper because then I need to know, okay, if we're not moving forward, why? Now if it's, you know, depending on the reason, that reason is going to determine whether or not I stick around or I don't or how I, you know, perceive moving forward. Because if it's something that I know... I have no real control over or nothing I can really influence and I'm probably going to be out because it's like, I, that's a lose lose situation. But if it's something like, you know, I've been hurt before or, you know, it, it just depends on yeah. what it is and me feeling that person out, you know, cause I, I mean, think, but I feel okay. you though, it, it, it is a big risk and it's a lot of energy, but hell, you might get a lot less energy afterwards. I think the one thing is like, and one thing I heard kind of in, in you saying some of this was that I, 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 I view it like I was trying to picture exactly like I visualize things weird. Right. So I was thinking about you. I was thinking about like what your first interaction is when okay. you see like, let's say like you were in a club right now or bar or whatever. Cause we don't club no more. We old. Uh, let's say we went to a lounge. True. Yeah. The <laughs> lounge. Know. There we go. You know what I'm saying? Grown and sexy. Right. They threw that on every flyer. Um, and, and you see a chick, right? Mm. Like, and she bad, and you want to holler. What's your thought process? I have no idea. It's very rare that I holler at a chick out in the open like that. But my thought process is, if a woman is fine, and I'm just like, damn, I want to know what she's about. Is my thought I gotta process? Have it. <laughs> like, Not necessarily, because like, it's like, I'm. It's it's usually a curiosity thing. Like, huh? I wonder what she's like. Okay. So I approach cool. it from that. I mean. Cause here's the thing, like I know a lot of people look like, damn, I want to fuck. I mean, that you, it's you know, CV and I are part of a special organization, yo, and we have superpowers. Yo. So it, that the the poom poom is automatically, as Uncle Charlemagne would say, the poom poom is automatically. I mean, that's nothing. It's that's on deck. yeah, it's on deck. So it's like I need more than that, especially that's what I'm looking for. So I need more than that. So if you sexy, that's a plus. But I'm like, okay, what's between her ears? How is she thinking? So, so you're like, you're in a different space. I wasn't trying to say like, you're like hunting for, you know, hunting for the poom poom, but yeah. I was just thinking along the lines. Like, so like, I, I think of things weirdly, like, so me and my, <laughs> Go me ahead. And my not, not even that, but I mean, just like on an off chance, like I, like me and my boys, we would be out or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I remember even when like one of them was more on the shy side, I was like, what's like, what's your thought process? Like, and the reason why I say that is cause like when you see a chick, like, I'm like, I might go up and talk to her. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, you know, but I don't have like any, like, even if she's cute and mm-hmm. she seems like she's together, like, I just have like a random conversation. Guilty. And like, I have Guilty. zero expectation. 
Yep. Of like what to come from that conversation. Like I don't necessarily want to get her contact information. I don't necessarily want to like sleep with her or yep. be her friend or anything. I just have that conversation. I just have a conversation with her. I've done that. And like and just enjoy the conversation and see where it goes. But like I think a lot of times people stop doing that after the first interaction. Like so like after you'd be like, "Man, you know what? They're cool. Like I've I found that me and her have this in common. She's nice. Mm-hmm. She's smart. Mm-hmm. This so then your expectations actually start to grow as you find out more about the person. Yes. Right? And so yeah. that, I think that's what the problem is. Like, I think, like, if you if you drop the expectation thing, even just beyond, you know, if like, because you have none when you first meet them. At least you shouldn't. Some yeah. people like me who have first date sex expectations might have a little bit of it. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you have, like, zero expectation from the person other than just to, like, purely enjoy their conversation, it, I think it all flows. I think it all just like I naturally agree. Comes together. That's why um shorty I'm dating now, that's how it started. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It was just I was in town, my hometown is boring. I knew she was there, I hadn't talked to her in a minute. I'm like, Oh, let's go out. And we had such good conversation, so much fun. I was like, Well damn. Didn't know all this about you. I need to do this again. Did it again, okay. and I was like, Well damn. You know, it it's exact. It progressed exactly, exactly like you said. Now, there's some chicks, you know, you got a crush on, or whatever. But I didn't have any of those thoughts or feelings for her until after we started spending more and more time together, and it kind of developed naturally. Um, and yeah. It, yeah, and like you said, there's <laughs> there's a chick now I do that with. I just I just mess with her, and we hold random conversations. She she's real cool. She's real funny. Um, yeah, I'll tell you about that off the air. But uh, because <laughs> <laughs> she might fuck around and be listening. So, but yeah. So I I, I hey, totally get to where you come from. Though. Yeah, shout out to you for supporting. Yeah. Now, real talk though, I think like even like like when you were talking about the phases, I was just like, man, if like we just take away expectation from the yep. whole process, yep. then it's like easier to weed somebody out. So like when Shorty is like, hey, I'm gonna move this way, and you could be like, oh, cool, do right. that, do that. And, and then it's like it's no it's no malice even though you like you know what I'm saying you enjoy like that energy and in that time and in that moment like sometimes you just gotta enjoy it like in that moment and in that time and like not even like really think about it from that that perspective because like when that person is trying to give you that energy like when you find a person that's trying to give you that same energy mm-hmm. did you want and you know it's like that energy like hey I want to do this long term then that's when you know you both can go ahead and talk about that but when it's not that just let them move the way they move. How you know it ain't... But see, here's the thing. That's an assumption. That's that energy, man. Like, it... It's I would have... I'd like to be a... hunt. Ah, oh my gosh. I can't air shit out like I want to. If I... <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna do it like I be I, doing it. No, I... <laughs> hell no. If, like... Oh, I definitely have a... I have had to have the conversation because I feel like that's the energy I've been getting. And it's like, all right, let me have this conversation before I jump out the fucking window. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening to the conversation. I'm looking at the patterns and the communication and everything is stepping up. I'm like, yo, all right, this is the energy I want. But still, there it's not. Nah. There's no, there is no window. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, I'm like, because there's, there's no expectation there. But that's what I mean. Like, yeah, you enjoying the energy, but it's like, you feel like the energy is, he, is one place and they still feel like it's not. And to I me, it's like, that's not... <laughs> it's not if they, if they normal. Feel like it was, they would have brought it to you. They would have gave you that energy already, right? So it's okay to go ahead and start accepting new energy into your sphere. Wait, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, in hell, I mean, until y'all decide what y'all gonna be, you know, it's fair game. You can't be mad. I mean, you can be mad, but you can't really be mad. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, look, man. I think like the whole dating phases could be so much easier if we just like let let all the expectation go man and that's really what i like that's really what i was thinking about when i was like uh looking at your um I, well not looking but listening to your post earlier and yeah. then like you said something about like not wanting to be a nagger and i was like man you, you know what but see like, bro you okay but you found like you found like your perfect match the, a lot of people have the fear of their time being wasted which is why you have the expectation and all that Cause you know, oh, I, he's a fuck boy. I don't want a fuck boy. And people run into the, they, they nobody wants their time being, especially when you get older, 
you know, when you're in a dirty 30 club, like, you know, and yeah. ladies, I'm sorry, I got jokes, but you know, they feel like their ovaries drying up. Like they, <laughs> there is, <laughs> they're going to have expectations. Like to most, have babies. most women want you to have a good job. This, that, they like, they're going to have, most women have expectations. And as a dude, I do have expectations as well, but I mean, I, I just need someone Number one, I need you to have the right mindset. Number two, if I can work with you and help you get to the next level, all right, let's go. But I don't have like a super strict, stern set of rules and guidelines and bylaws, but you know, I'm able to let it flow too. And when you let it flow, like CV said, that is your chance to really sit back and analyze and say, okay, I can, I can work with that or not. I don't like that. Where are people getting these rules and shit from? Like, it's crazy. They're friends who ain't got nobody. Yeah, it's like watching everybody else, right? Like, I've had people tell me, like, man, you know what, man? You and Jess are, like, relationship goals. And I'm like, man, we done been through some shit. Like, That's what they don't we know. We still love each other. Yeah, like, I'm like, yo, so you don't really know. Like, you see us smiling and stuff like that. But, like, we love each other. And, like, that's what get us through, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, even before the love was as deep as it is now, like, you know what I mean? Like, we knew that we wanted to be together. But, like, I, you know, I was on a two-year hiatus, really like from serious stuff before me and her got together. Right. So I was just chilling. So, I mean, like, I didn't want to, I didn't want nothing else serious. I, was, I used to tell so I'd be like, look, this, this, this penis is about all you're going to get. And, uh, you know, if you can't, if you can't deal with that, then, hey. And I've had a few tell me, hey, man, you know, you an asshole for saying that. Like, what kind of mess is that to say to me? And I'm like, look, like, I'm just being honest. Those other dudes are going to sell you dreams. I'm just telling you what's up. So, Word. it is what it is. But, man, like, I, like, like straight up, man, like, I, you know, so it wasn't, like, a magical, like, me and Jessica just walked up to each other. And we're like, it's love at first sight. <laughs> but, but um, I, I, yeah. I say I'm blessed, I, you know, definitely to find her. But I do think, like, um, a part of that, me uh, doing that was just kind of, like, there was no expectation. Because, like, for her... You know, one thing I did find out about her, you said, like, different people had different pasts. Like, she had, like, an ex-boyfriend that she went through some things with. She really wasn't even, like, expecting to kind of fall. And so, like, we really didn't, like, talk about relationships like that. We were playing Scrabble on the floor. Wow. And Monopoly mm-hmm. and just, just random stuff. You know what I'm saying? Bowling, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, just, just did anything and everything. And so, you know, whenever it came time to, you know, us kind of expressing it, I expressed myself first. And then she actually said, you know, she felt the same. Mm-hmm. And but let's say let's let's replay that situation and say I expressed it first, and then she didn't feel the same. Mm-hmm. What you think I was gonna do? You would have been out. Exactly. Because <laughs> I was like, well, what am I gonna be? You know what I'm saying? Like we could have been. I don't even know. Like if if like for me, like I was at a point where I was like, well, why am I gonna fool myself and be like, you know what? We can be cool, and um, I'm gonna like let my feelings slowly subside. I can fall back into a friendship, but I'm going to be real with my own energy. The energy I now have for you has transformed into, you know, some serious stuff. So I ain't going to be your friend. Nice knowing you. <laughs> like we... And you know what? That's a dangerous and slippery road too, because when a chick finds out you like them and then it doesn't work and y'all decide to be friends, low key they be getting jealous of the new girl and they don't be wanting to hear that stuff because they like the attention and the energy and they're not getting it no more and then they start to think well dang he wanted me you don't, know don't give me that afterthought now because right. i don't want your i don't want your energy to come from from jealousy and that's not i don't think jealousy is a place of actualizing feelings or realizing that your feelings were indeed there in the whole you know now now you want to be with me. now nah, chick now nah, i need to know that that energy was there before so, I mean, that's, you know, I probably would have stepped away from that situation and been like, okay, well, let me go ahead and explore something else. And, I yeah. mean, it su- it would have sucked. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I was like, man, I'm pretty sure that, you know, Shawty liked me. And I know I like her. So, if she you know, I know that's a tough tough mental space. But I think, you know, you just got to simplify it. Because once, you know, when somebody says something, mm-hmm. they probably mean it. <laughs> like, that's just, that's just the sucky part about it. Like, they, they actually honestly mean it and they might not mean no harm by it but i've had that happen a time or two it's a time or two you know what my um you know yep. my ex said to me one time and i didn't listen to her and i had replayed this conversation in my head um for real because you know like sometimes you like 
You ever watch a movie and then you like you don't pick up on a line until like the second or third time you watch it? The fifth time, yeah. Like, me. Yeah. Like so basically like I was replaying some stuff in my head and um you know, she had told me one time, you know, she was a little too selfish and um you know, she really wasn't ready for anything like that. And then she also talked about like how she don't be your you know, don't plan on um being uh in a relationship with a man that's like her dad, and then she called me like her dad one time. Mm. I was like, ooh. I was like, well, you know what? She was telling me that a while ago that I wasn't going to be here. Yeah, so wow. I, walked away. I don't know why we, you know, kicked it as long as we did. But, yeah. Feelings, so, man. Love will make you stay through some shit. Yeah. And, hell, she should have been like, you know what? She should have been like, because both, both parties have to be self-aware, and both parties have to hold themselves accountable. So like mm. like the person who's less interested really should be like, you know, why am I doing this? What what time am I wasting here? Like why am I wasting this nope. time? Nope. Because the person who don't, they want that because when you like someone, they're gonna feel it, and that's a good feeling. Whether you like there's <laughs> feeling, of, feeling of being wanted. <clears throat> um, <laughs> God I shouldn't say this. There's been chicks who really like me and they've done shit for me. I didn't play them or use them, but I'm like, they would cook for me. They would just, oh, they boy. would do a lot of shit for me, man. You lucky them boy ain't poison, poison your food, bro. Yeah, listen, and I yeah. and I enjoyed the feeling, and I liked the feeling, <laughs> so I could see why people would lead them on. I didn't. I, I would keep it 100, that. but I could see why. Like, you love the attention. Like, you love that feeling of being wanted. Nobody wants to walk around and feel like nobody wants them. So, and then if you know that person is about to dip and you ain't got no starting lineup, <laughs> then you be like, damn, I don't know if I'm gonna find this again. Let me string them along a little bit. Like, it's, it's right. yeah, it's it's crazy, man. That, but that's why another point of mine, and like you just said, being self aware. That's why another point of mine in um the first video, the first podcast was protect. You got to protect your feelings, man. No matter how bad you like that person, just like on the radio, this chick <laughs> from the Breakfast Club, y'all yeah. eating each other's butt, y'all spending time yeah, together. Man. He treat yeah, you like a, a queen. Pack. Yeah, it should be an ass eating pack. Like after I eat your ass, <laughs> I solemnly swear <laughs> that I will never divulge that information. People just reckless out yeah. here. Yeah, on the radio, national radio, like they're yeah. in every state, damn near. But so disrespectful. You gotta. Shorty should have protected her feelings. The fact that the fact that she had to be the one to step up and say, you know, I want to tell my brother. That's the issue. The man should be in the forefront. Like when a man. This is my opinion, cause I, you know, nowadays women rock. They y'all, y'all have always rocked. Let me take that back. Women have always run the world, in my opinion. Um, Go ahead, tell them I'm last. <laughs> <laughs> nah, don't do that to me. Um, but nah, like the dude, you need to step up and be in the forefront. Like, but the fact that he was trying to hide it should have been sign number one. But Shorty should have protected her feelings when she felt that way. She should have spoke up. Uh, and I don't know what they said to each other behind closed doors. He might have been on the radio on the spot and lying. I don't know. He, he might not like, have a girlfriend. No, my girl gonna hear that, yo. But I know she's <laughs> pregnant though, and she a nurse yeah. too. She knew. <laughs> hey, man. hey, but this this is what I was gonna say in closing. Like for real. Like I think about like relationships, and this is like kind of my motto, right? Yeah. Relationship is two selfish ass people coming together. Like, and yeah. it's all conditioned. So like you're coming, you know, essentially. Not calling you selfish, brother, but we all selfish. Yeah. You can't, like, let's say Shawty's bad. You know, you like her because she might have fat booty and oh, she's yeah. smart and she cool or whatever, right? And then she likes you because I don't know what, what she likes about you, but she likes everything about you, right? Mm. And so <laughs> with all those things considered, like, it's, it's selfish things. Maybe, you know, maybe you feed her good. I don't know. Like, but whatever it is. You know, she likes what she's getting. Now, the, the question is, when that person is willing to be a little less selfish and give a little bit more to give you what you want or what you're seeking from the situation. Mm -hmm. So, like, I so if I come to Jessica and I'm like, yo, man, like, I'm I'm trying to get at Shorty. Like, she meets these needs for me. Mm -hmm. So, like, at some point, like, when I, when I realize, like, what she needs, that's when I have to be less selfish and say, okay. Yep. And that's how the relationship really gets formed. Yeah. So like if, if if said person's not willing to to, to be less selfish, because we always gonna always be selfish. Hell yeah. No matter what. You know what I mean? Like, let's be I'm be one hundred. I'm selfish. I will wake my wife up if I want some. And I know she'd be tired. Let <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bruh. I know she'd be tired. I, you, 
<laughs> Listen, my cousin, uh, shout out to my cousin Twan and his wife Pookie. He was at my apartment one time and <laughs> we were there. They had two kids, right? So we were there with the girls chilling and she called. She called him and said, all right, I'll be there in five minutes. So five minutes goes by, 10 minutes go by, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40. He said, dang, where Pookie at? He called her. She said, oh, I'm outside. He said, well, why the hell you ain't come in? She said, oh, I went to um Five Guys and got a, a sandwich, and I didn't want to share none with you, so I ate it in the car. <laughs> Boy, I exactly. was on the floor exactly. crying, exactly. bro. Exactly. Crying. You're going to be a little bit selfish. <laughs> but it's, so, yeah, man, to all the ladies that, that, that hear me, just hear me. If y'all want to find a dude or whatever that y'all looking for, whoever y'all looking for, then y'all gonna have to be a little less selfish mm-hmm. than you are than you are in your current everyday normal role life. That's pretty much the end all being be all to making a relationship work. Just being less selfish, being more about the cohesive unit. So if somebody's not giving you that same energy back, and when they see that you putting forth and you're being less selfish and you're giving that energy. Yep. If they're not willing to do that, then that's deuces. You got to give something up, yo. Straight up. You got to give something up. You're going to have to eat some pussy. You're going to suck some dick. You got to give something up, man. <laughs> We're real talk. And that's yep. expected. First date, man. <laughs> All right, y'all. So thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, from my experience podcast and we here, man. You can find hey, both of us on Instagram. What's y'all Instagram? Uh, we underscore here underscore man. And we yep. are FME underscore podcast on Instagram. Um, we are on SoundCloud, YouTube, and join the Facebook group. Where can they find you guys at? Uh, yeah, we just on the gram right now. We're going to get on Facebook. We're getting there. Um, in terms of streaming, we're like, let's see. Sorry, man. Apple, Google Play, Anchor, Spreaker, um, tune in, Overcast, Stitcher. That's it, I think. Okay, I need like six or seven of those. And I gotta get Google Play right, y'all. Um, also, <laughs> if y'all have any questions, y'all want to be a guest, y'all want to say, um, you got an issue or something you're dealing with, hit us up from my experience podcast at gmail.com. Make sure you check out We Here, man. It's a great show. Great show, guys. It's different than our you. show, too. So I know people like variety. So you know, well, tell them the, tell them about your show. Tell them the premise of the show. Oh, the premise of the show. So I am just one half of the show. I'm actually like the less better half, right? Like my wife, <laughs> uh, Nella B, <laughs> she's actually the star of the show. She's got this great voice. So people like to listen to her and I just kind of tag along. But we talk about everything from adulting, um, things from our past, um, and, and also just currently in our marriage and we just share that. We just give it to you raw, and real, and it's it's just fun. It's been a very therapeutic exercise to do with my wife. So, and it's Check very out. good for y'all to listen out here, those of you who are dating, because they are married and they both have had lives before and a life together. And y'all need to listen to people yes, who are experienced <laughs> and not just out here running these streets because. Is a totally different conversation, and I enjoy listening to and listening to it because that is something that I aspire to have when I can find a woman who wants to freaking act right and be my slut <laughs> at home and be I, a lady in the streets. But I appreciate that, <laughs> and I and I hope you find that man because you know I got mine. <laughs> yeah, you got yours. You lucky. <laughs> yeah, man. Blessings, man. Hey, yeah. so lucky that my homeboy wanted to take it from me. But, All right, yo, uh, yes, y'all need to go. <laughs> <laughs> y'all need to go to we here man right now matter of fact go over here right now what's the name of the episode oh friends of friends y'all need to go listen to that episode man i almost drove off the road listening to it and i like i said i had to call them afterwards i'm like bro what what, what? yeah what did, did that really happen man but I, i'm gonna tell you man i live vicariously through you guys you guys be talking about all the single folk stuff and i'd be like i remember when <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you got, but see, you got some warm cheeks to lay next to every night, boy. It'd be some. They don't. The, the single people don't tell you about them cold, lonely nights, boy. When this microphone cut yeah, off, right. <laughs> I'm about to go lay next to them cheeks in a few minutes. By see, the way, yeah, I'm yep. about to just lay in this empty bed and, and think about work tomorrow. But you anyway, <laughs> yeah, I got space. I got space. All right, y'all. We done talked y'all ear off enough. Thank y'all for listening, and we'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for joining us, uh, CV. Appreciate it, fam. All right.